What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Cryptid Saturday, and in today's Cryptid Saturday, I'm going over the Cryptids of Vermont. I always like to say, guys, out on the rights of these articles, I just use them to push along information. So this one will be in the description down below. Please go over there and show them some love. Start with the Bennington Monster. The Bennington Monster, also known as the Bennington Triangle, is said to be a creature with the body of a large cat, the head of a reptile, and the wings of a bird. Said to be anywhere from five to seven feet tall and is known to emit a piercing scream that can be heard for miles. Some people believe that it is a surviving pterosaur, while others speculate that it is an species of creature. Over the years, there have been numerous sightings, with many people claiming to have seen it flying through the air or running through the woods. The first reported sighting occurred in 1945, when a man in his mid-70s named Mitty Rivers disappeared while hunting. In the weeks following his disappearance, several other people reported a strange creature in the woods and some even claiming to have heard blood-curdling scream. On December 1st, 1946, a woman named Miss Paula Weldon vanished while hiking near Glastonbury Mountain, known as Patch Hollow. The hollow has since become known as the Triangle due to the number of unexplained disappearances and strange occurrences that have happened there. Paula's disappearance sparked a search effort, but no trace of her was ever found. She was one of five people who vanished without a trace between 1945 and 1960. Often referred to as the Patch Hollow Massacre, believe it or not, the Weldon disappearance was the incident that birthed the Vermont State Police. Despite numerous searches and investigations, no one has ever been able to explain what happened to these people or to definitively prove the existence of the Bennington Monster. Some people believe that the Bennington Monster is a supernatural creature, while others think that it is a real flesh and blood animal that has yet to be discovered by science. Whatever the case may be, the legend has become an integral part of the town's folklore and continues to fascinate and intrigue people to this day. I don't think it was a pterosaur, and if I'm being honest with you, it almost just sounds like a person. Like, they might have actually had, like, a serial killer that was just taking these people on this uh, trail near these mountains. But people go missing a lot, and, like, the screams they heard could have been a mountain lion. So it could have been a lot of things. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Champ, the monster of Lake Champlain. In the 1980s, the state of Vermont and New York passed resolution in their respective governments to protect Champ, a legendary lake monster that supposedly resides in Lake Champlain a natural lake that stretches along the border of these two states, merely aimed at protecting the creature from any harm or harassment from human activity. Significant because they recognize the cultural and ecological importance of Champ to the local communities in the region. Lake Champlain has long been the subject of legends and folklore featuring a large serpent-like creature that inhabits its waters. While the existence of Champ remains unproven, many people in the region in its existence and consider it an important part of their heritage. It's a famous monument on the Burlington side of Lake Champlain celebrating this iconic Vermont cryptid. Everyone thinks that Champ is a Tanistrophirus, not a plesiosaur because it actually has legs and it could walk. What the running thought was at one point was Tanistrophirus would actually walk along the bottom and look for fish. That's kind of been debated with some people thinking that Tanistrophirus is actually a terrestrial creature and it would actually use its neck like a fishing pole and just hold its head above the water and drop it down to get the fish. But there is no Tanistrophius that was ever in Vermont. At least I don't think there was. I'm not sure if one has ever actually been found. If there is one, there's going to have to be a big enough population of them to have one survived into modern day in a lake that wasn't always there because I believe Lake Champlain is a glacier lake. So I I don't know. It's definitely, in my opinion, not a Tanistrophius. And they actually have a name for it. They call it Champ Tanistrophius, which I think is kind of cool. But uh, I know you're wrong. It would be awesome if there is a Tanistrophius there. I just don't think there is. But what I do think there are seeing is possibly some kind of like long eel fish like creature just flying with the waters and the lakes. And it's just going to kind of cause a lot of confusion. But there have been enough sightings to where there's got to be something and enough people are seeing something. The flip side of it though, Champ is also a huge tourist attraction for that area. The woods near Northfield, Vermont are rumored to be home to a strange creature, which is said to be half human and half pig. The local legend has different versions, but some details remain constant. On the night before Halloween in 1951, a 17-year-old boy named Sam Harris ventured out alone with an egg basket, intending to cause some trouble. However, he never returned, and his body was never discovered, leaving his fate a mystery. The Devil's Wash Bowl, located near Norfield, is a spot known for its caves, waterfalls, and rivers. Following 
multiple sightings of the pigman, locals began to explore the area and discovered a cave with scattered animal bones, including some that appeared to be from a pig's. News of the pigman's lair spread quickly, but the creature itself remained elusive, and no one else was able to capture it. Whether the pigman is Sam Harris or the animal that consumed him remains to be a mystery to this day. Yeah, I think it was just the kid. Uh, that, that's what makes the most sense to me. It may not have been. It could very well have been a animal of some kind. Uh, something that's taken out pigs. Lots of pe things eat pigs if they can catch them. Uh, it also could have just been somebody killing pigs and butchering them and just throwing the bones in the cave and that's where they found it. But uh, if I had to go with one, I would say this is either A, an old wives' tale that people tell their kids so that way they don't go out at night and egg your house on Halloween, or B, it was an animal that was getting fixed. But let me know what you guys think. The Black Beast of Snake Mountain. Nestled deep within the green mountains of Vermont, there lies a sinister legend that has captivated the imaginations of locals for centuries. The legend speaks of a creature known as the Black Beast of Snake Mountain a terrifying entity that roams the forested slopes of Snake Mountain and preys on unsuspecting hikers and campers. While many believe the legend to be nothing more than a folktale, others claim to have encountered the beast firsthand, describing it as a massive black furred creature with glowing red eyes and razor sharp claws. The origins of the Black Snake Mountain legend are shrouded in mystery, but many believe it dates back to the days of the Abenaki, a Native American tribe that once inhabited the area. According to legend, the Abenaki worshipped a powerful forest spirit known as the Wendigo, a malevolent being that was said to possess the power to transform humans into monsters. Some believe that the Wendigo was responsible for creating the Black Beast, imbuing it with supernatural powers and insatiable hunger for human flesh. So if this is like an offshoot of a Wendigo, then that would explain why it looks the way it does. If it's like a Wendigo, because Wendigos can change from human to animal, or and they'll eat people. Sometimes they eat animals. Sometimes they eat animals or people in human form. Sometimes they eat humans or animals in animal form. And it's like a weird thing. But sometimes you get Wendigos that are stuck in the middle, and that seems to be what the Black Beast is. That being said, I don't believe that Wendigos are an actual thing, obviously. I've just said the name quite a few times now, and I think the lore is if you say it three times, something bad's gonna happen to you. The Indians obviously worshipped something. They did believe that these creatures were real. And now this, I do believe, could just be, you know, some made-up tale that people have passed down. It could just be that this is their folklore, the Native American side that has got attributed over time. Or it's just some other kind of animal. Uh, but some things like this are just more fun to think about and speculate on than they are to actually try and figure out if, you know, what this creature could actually be. So, I guess let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. That is it, guys. That is our list for the cryptids of Vermont. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and why don't you guys go on down to the comments section and let me know, are you guys from Vermont? Have you heard about any of these cryptids before this video? And if you had, I would really like to hear that story. Or if you've seen these cryptids, I would really like to hear that story. And while you're down there, guys, please remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you never miss another video from me. And I will see you guys next Saturday for Cryptid Saturday.